Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Juan Carlos Brando, and it's a pleasure for me to be with you holding this show or hosting this show with the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has been working on this immigration field for over uh, 46 years. Thank you so much uh, for joining this show over YouTube or on Facebook. And uh, we are expecting to receive your questions regarding to immigration. Don't forget that the attorney Margaret W. Wong has been working on this field for over 46 years. She has 15 attorneys working with her and over 60 people working and speaking uh, more than 30 languages in the office. So you can just make a call. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. And she will uh, be happy to receive you and to receive your call to give you the consultation that you uh, need in order to uh, clarify your immigration situation. Let's welcome the attorney Margaret W. Wong today. Hello, Ms. Wong. How are you doing today? I'm very good and thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for your time and for sharing your knowledge with everybody every Thursday in the English, Facebook, and uh, YouTube. And well, I, I would like to start by um, asking you uh, what the changes are regarding to immigration right now, and especially with this I-134A. I've heard that some judges uh, across the country are getting together uh, in order to discuss the continuation or the extension of this program uh, for humanitarian ra uh, reasons for Venezuelans, Nicaraguans, Haitians, and Cubans to bring them on a humanitarian parole. Great, and thank you for asking. Basically, these meetings is more like, because right now Biden is running for the race, so he's wanting to win. So right now the illegal entry um, is not as bad. It actually, it's getting a lot better because the most people from the most country that's coming, now we're doing the I-134A, and, and now the problem then becomes what happened and how long? Like some people, they wait for three months, they get an appointment. Other people, they wait for one month, they get an appointment. So what are some tips that you could come maybe more? Um, actually, in the Middle East, years and years ago, they also started a program like that. And normally, the people who have relatives, so it's opposite. If you apply for tourist visa, the best thing is no relatives in America, right? Because the less ties you have in America, the more ties you have in home country, it's easier to get a tourist visa. I-134A is the opposite. The more people you have friends here, you have relatives here, the more easy it is to get because then they know you're not going to become a public charge. You're not going to get on welfare, Medicaid, Medicare. Another bad thing or good thing, uh, what, whatever that's happening is now in New York and every city because uh, uh, Texas and Florida, they're sending all these people who came undocumented to different cities. And now the newspaper are saying, well, we don't have enough hotels for them. We don't have enough um, pop, like uh, aids for them. You know, through the years, people who came to America undocumented, we never got government help. Um, so I just don't understand how some now they're talking about government help, putting them up in, in rundown hotels, that uh, they're homeless. Normally, people are very, very innovative that they even have become undocumented. So I think that may be something wrong there that we people like us, we don't use public charge. You know, the whole thing now is America's becoming poor. We don't want to support people who came with no papers. But reality is we don't need their support. We don't ask for their support. But sometimes the Texas may, uh, uh, governor or the Florida governor is saying, oh, you know, they need support. They need this. You know, we may not look as pretty. We may not have a good haircut. We may have ugly glasses or broken glasses. But give us a month, we'll get it all fixed. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong, for this answer. Don't forget that you can call. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 is the phone number that you need to call in order to talk to the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, or one of the attorneys in the law firm. Uh, we have a first question today. 
is Robin says, close someone out of status for four years and got TPS now for eight years, also traveled twice on advanced parole. Is it eligible to adjust status yes. to your US citizen spouse? Yes. You don't even need a PIP. The military only applies if you need a PIP, but because you already had parole and have TPS, you don't need a military spouse. It could be any spouse or children under 21. Absolutely, you can adjust. That's perfect. Thank you so much. So, Robin, just give us a call, and Ms. Wong can help you out with your case. The phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Interesting question coming in, <clears throat> says, good afternoon. Uh, I am from Indonesia. Uh, how can I get a work permit? It's tough because America really don't have a pathway. I don't know if you're still on a tourist visa, you're on student visa, um, you are married. So there's really no pathway. So if you're still legal, you may want to switch it to a student visa or H1B visa and maybe do a perm, which is three step, and then do the I-140 and file for the green card. You just have to go through the regular route. If you're already out of status for less than 180 days, then you don't have a perm bar. So the, the regular law applies because Indonesia is not one of those parole countries. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And uh, next question is, since when does the clock run to become a citizenship? Since the moment I filed... Uh, since the, the day you got the green card. You look at your green card on there. So it depends. If you got the green card through marriage, there's a CR1. That means there's a two-year green card. It's an IR1. There's a 10-year green card from a day of residence. So they'll have residence since that's a day. So you're still married to an American citizen, you get a green card in three years. If you're not married to an American citizen, you can get a green card in five years, you can get a citizenship in five years. But for example, I got my green card through my employment, and then a year later, I married to an American citizen. So because I got my green card through employment, and because I'm married to an American citizen, now, as long as I have three years of marriage to an American citizen, I don't need to wait for the five years for green card. I need only to wait for two years and nine months from the date of marriage, not from the date of the green card. So it's fun. I used to teach in a law school. I was an adjunct professor. So these are fun questions. But the general rule is three years or five years. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. So this counts starting from the moment that this person receives the green card, right? A date resident. Sometimes you get the green card three months later, six months later. later. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Uh, we have uh, more questions coming in through our inbox on Facebook. And this next question says as follows. Um, Luis says, I want to start my immigration progress uh, process uh, some friends of my wife recommended you to me or recommended us to you. So my question is, I want to move into the United States. I am an entrepreneur and I would like to start my company in the U.S. So what is the process and what is the easiest way? I don't know what co what country. Did he say what country he's from? I don't know what country you're from. So you're from Argentina. You have an E2 status, Pakistan. You have E2. Uh, Hong Kong, you have no E2. So entrepreneur, Canada, Mexico, you have E2 status to start your own business. Or if you registered Mexico, Mexico Yes. Absolutely. So that's a good one. So you can do an E2 status, register the business. And because Mexico real estate is not that high, you can actually do an E2 visa for lesser than 100,000 an entrepreneur. Uh, but uh, so that's an E2 visa. So now you get a five year E2. Normally, when you fly in, they give you every two years, two years. Then to get the green card, you cannot use your own business to sponsor yourself for a perm. You can have another employer do a perm for you. Or you may want to use your own business to do an EB-5, which is 800000 in investment. Or you can use your own business to do an entrepreneur uh, green card. That's another way. But for now, to come, maybe use an E-2. If you have a degree, use a TN visa. It's not that hard, especially you're still legal. Because if you come undocumented, all these dreams, 
you would not be able to do. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Um, and well, we have another interesting question, but don't forget that Ms. Wong is only one call of distance from you. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 is the phone number that you need to call in order to talk to one of the attorneys. She has offices in seven cities of the United States, in Atlanta, Chicago, Cleveland, Columbus, Nashville, New York, and uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. And the phone number is just 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 is the phone number that you need to call. Uh, Ms. Wong, uh, so how long is taking for a person that wants to travel overseas that has TPS approved and this person wants to travel to El Salvador, how long does it take to get the advanced parole approved? Okay, four months to nine months. It used to be two months, but plan on, because you don't want to book a ticket and then you don't get the parole. But TPS parole, you will get, it came back. Under Trump, they sort of cut it out, but now it's here. Okay. Um, the next question is, I have an appointment to, to do the biometrics, but the address is not um, legible. Right. Right. How can I know what office I need to go? You I live in Tennessee. Right. You could call them or, you know, you can actually walk into uh, Tennessee, the fingerprint notice and add. Tennessee is a very nice, depends on Memphis and Nashville. Nan Nashville have sort of a young office. I would just maybe walk in there and say, I live here. Do you want me to reschedule or what do I do? If they're nice and they're not busy, they may just take it there and then for you. Because sometimes they're mean and they won't do it. But maybe just walk in there or make an info pass appointment and ask, but then it will take time. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Um, next question that we are getting here is, I want to go back to my country. I have asylum pending. Um, do I need to withdraw the asylum? Uh, it depends if you are in... Uh, not in proceedings, if NTA not issued, I would definitely withdraw um, and then leave. And it doesn't hurt to go to ICE and don't be scared. Show them the ticket so they'll give you a letter. And when you go home, you should go register with the American embassy and tell them I'm here. So immigration know you left because otherwise they don't know. And the asylum case would go on. And sometimes they don't trust us. Sometimes they forgot. I mean, who knows with the A number. If you're already in proceedings, if I were you, I have clients who doesn't care, they just leave, they figure I'll never come back. I sort of don't agree with that. I think you need to do a motion to do a voluntary departure and I would not leave until the VD is granted. Normally they give you 30, 60, 90, 120 days. Then you should leave at that time and also report to ICE and say, here's my ticket, I'm leaving. Can you give me a letter so I can go to America? Whatever you do, make sure you report in the American embassy on where you are going, because then they know that they left because your 10 year bar, your five year bar, your 20 year bar starts from that day. Someone have to know you left. Okay, thank you so much. But um, I, I've seen some people from Mexico that um, they just get on a plane and they leave. And they say that there is no stamp in the passport that they left. They came through the border without inspection. They stayed here for 15 years. And then they take a plane, they take a flight, and they go back to Mexico. Right. So uh, they don't have any stamp because it looks like they don't stop the uh, They don't stop. They uh, because we have a lot of Mexican clients. Actually, we just got the, a grant from the government of Mexico to help their people to do better because they always have some grants prepared. Uh, if you go, if you fly from America, any border to Mexico, they stamp the passport. But if you take a bus or if you drive, they don't stamp. The reason why people do that, for example, I'm married to an American citizen, right? So I just married her yesterday. One day I want to get my green card. So for example, I leave today. 
And I go there and then I tell, I apply for a tourist visa and come back because there's no stamp. So I said, on the question they ask you, were you ever in America? You say, no. If you were in America, when were you in America? Never in America. So if I'm lucky enough to get the stamp, you know, to get the tourist visa, come back. If I'm married to an American citizen, I could also adjust that as in America, get a green card. Now, that's the old way to do business. The new way, because Homeland Security Act came in in February 2002, uh, immigration took up 60% of Homeland Act budget in March of 2003, and is divided into three. So after 04-05, immigration is pretty on top of leaving coming. So I think that way doesn't work. I mean, all the tricks of the trade, I know. I mean, I'm a Chinese, I'm not stupid, you know? So yes, uh, one reason they do that is they leave and they come back to that's no. So for example, the first time I came legally and I left, and then at the airport, they canceled my visa because they think I'm illegally working. So the second time I came back, I came illegally. Now it's 15 years. My son is over 21. I want to get a green card. So I, a lot of times my clients would say, well, can I tell them I never left because I did come with the I-94 the first time, but now they cancel my visa. So I came back the second time illegally. My answer is always no, because Homeland Security is different from the old Department of Justice. Department of Justice trust people like us. That's why tax returns, I mean, America is always on, you know, very low and all that. You just trust America is a 250 year country. America, you know, I just, that's why we love America. It's a little bit naive, very kind, very generous, but America is changing with Homeland Security. Homeland Security, the job is to for Homeland for Terra. So inadvertently, somehow they'll find out we have lied. And now not only could we not get the green card, we added for a lie. You know, so um, that's why, I mean, that's a great idea, but it, some, it most of the time it doesn't work. Maybe one out of hundred worked. And then people say, oh, Margaret, I heard this, I heard that, you know, but I'm like, eh, yeah, sorry. Thank you so much. No, you're good, you're good. We are learning from you. Oh. Uh, okay, Miss Wong, this next question comes from Vegas. Well, not from the city of Vegas, but from a person that the last name is Vegas. It's legal. Yeah, it's legal entry. The question is, I came on parole for Wawa. So I think what happened is your lawyer filed a 360 and 45 for you, and that I went 31. And you came legally on a parole, so your legal entry. So even though your first entry is illegal, Wawa doesn't care if you're legal or illegal. So don't worry about it. Uh, it doesn't waive the permanent bar, but you have no problem getting your green card because you are Wawa case. Wawa case and you visa case are the only only two circumstances that overcome illegal entry and, il and overcome perm bar. So don't worry about it. You will get a green card. And try not to think too much because these are all legal issues. The more you think, the more you are scared. You are already a victim of abuse. So don't think too much. Enjoy life. Enjoy your work permit. Enjoy your legal entry. But sometimes life is so tough. The more you think, the more it's like you get into more depression. You know, It's like you can't get out of that forest. Yeah, that's true. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Minoska is asking the next question, uh, but let me first remind everybody that they can call the office. <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, the, the number in the office is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984 is the phone number that you need to call to make an appointment with the attorney, Margaret W. Wong. Don't forget that she's traveling to New York, to Nashville, to Columbus, to Raleigh, uh, to Atlanta, and uh, to Chicago as well. And, well, she will be able to take care of your case. You just need to make a call, and the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Ninoska is asking the next question, and she says, I entered the United States with a C1 transit not c1d crewman's visa can i adjust status uh, with u.s citizen if i overstayed there is a restriction um in the u.s cis manual but the restriction does not apply for c1 C1D, because C1D is a crewman, C1, normally they put on underneath your passport visa transit, but it doesn't matter. Um, uh, 
immigration should have there. If not, do a 102. Yes, you can uh, adjust. Okay, thank you so much. And don't forget, Inoska, that you can call. The phone number is 216-279-3984. 216-279-3984. Next question. Interesting. I am lesbian and I was married to a man. But I'm not straight anymore. Does it look bad if I marry my girlfriend and she files for me? This is a frequent question because it, when Tongma fell, everybody believes that, well, if I'm a lesbian, I'm a lesbian. I'm not going to play with the system because it's not nice, you know, because you're hurting future uh, same-sex marriages. But if you really are, you just have to prove it. I don't know if you have children. I have a case where the girl already have three children with a man that he was. she was married for like, I don't know, 20 years. And now suddenly... She divorced him and second day married a girl. You know, I mean, that looks sort of weird, I think. But um, you need to know when you come out, you know, on social media, is she with you? You know, things like that. It's not just will they believe us. We have the burden of proof to prove to them we are not, uh, we are. Um, and you need to know the culture. If I'm a same-sex person, am I trans? And how do I meet another person? And when you say I'm not straight anymore, you may want to talk to a same-sex person uh is that a right term because of my understanding like chinese we don't like to be called chink right but as an american you won't know i only learned because i am chinese so we don't like to have you know that the kids will say oh you have eyes like that the chinese don't like that so you really may want to talk to someone what are the correct terms are you using the correct terms um things like that because uh it's immigration is not stupid you know and and life, I believe, is not just about green card and work permit. Because you really have to think about the integrity of the program, the integrity of the future. Of Because if everybody, like uh, welfare, if everybody cheat on welfare, they're going to cut welfare benefits. So people who really need it could not get it. You know, that's that's what I worry about. But that's okay. If you are, you are uh, really into women, learn how does it feel like learn how don't just divorce today marry tomorrow and then are you still living with your with your children yes whose name is on the on the emergency in the school oh my husband you know how far is your husband five minutes i mean it really doesn't make sense but there are couples who work very well together um so these are all things that you need to review okay thank you so much miss wong and yeah, well, uh, it's just so many people have tried to trick the system and then the system become, becomes more strict because they don't believe uh, many cases because they don't look real. So it has to be real in order to, to let you do something. And of course, it looks uh, a little suspicious maybe that first you were married to a person from uh, the opposite sex, and then you want to marry to a person which is your same sex. Well, people change, but you need to prove it to immigration because they will have questions. I, I don't I don't remember, Ms. Wong, if I, if I mentioned to you when I was in my dad's appointment for the asylum case, um, and the officer came outside of the of the office and he asked me who are you i said i am his son what's your name my name is juan carlos oh you're the famous juan carlos and that's what he said uh, can i ask you a couple questions and i said yeah of course um he asked me a couple dates and a couple things i clarify him with what's going on and he was like please and 14 days later, my dad's uh, asylum was granted. Uh, but they have a lot of discretion for these kind of cases, Ms. Wong. When they have a, a doubt, they, they need more information about this. Yes, and, and well, that's, that's why some of the RFEs come. And, well, you know more than this than I do. Next question is coming, uh, Tom Bila or Tom Bia. 
So you have a baby in extensive medical treatment in Houston. We have B1, B2 visas. Yes, uh, you need to file the five. Don't file asylum because it's it's very easy. Don't use a lawyer. File the 539 every five months. And if since the baby is in medical treatment, I don't know if you're from the, from the Middle East because a lot of those countries still pay for their treatment for their own people. So if that's the case. Also get a letter from the hospital saying there's treatment. You have you should have no problem getting a tourist visa extension, extension, extension. Uh, that's what I would do. Because asylum is fear to go back especially if your country gives you the money uh, to treatment. Maybe the country doesn't, but country, uh, asylum is more for fear of returning uh, back to home country. It's not so much for medical treatment. Uh, depends on what country you're from. Is there any fear? Then you can do asylum. You can also change maybe a status of student, but why? Because you have a good tourist visa. It also depends on your life dreams. Are you an entrepreneur? Are you, uh, can you do an E2 status? Uh, do you want to work... Um, uh, if you have a university degree, you can change a into a H one B. So, but asylum, if there's a fear, so for the for your police officer, you know stuff like that. Um, so it depends. I would not just file for asylum just to get that C eight work permit because then what? Because B two is a very good visa, especially for a sick child. Because you don't need, don't overthink. You know, you have a sick person. Your energy should. I mean, I would worry about the family and also. Um, you know how do you pay? How do you pay for the for the for the for the medical care? Is sort of sad because sometimes these medical cares are so expensive. You know, stuff like that. Okay, thank you so much, Miss Wong. And we have more interesting questions today. We only have three more minutes. And let me just remind everybody that the phone number is two one six two seven nine three nine eight four. 216-279-3984 is the phone number of the attorney Margaret W. Wong, who has been working on this field for over 46 years in the city of Cleveland, Ohio, and has extended to several cities, but right now, seven cities in the United States, Atlanta, Chicago, Columbus, Cleveland, um, Nashville, New York, and Raleigh, North Carolina, and the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. 4984 I am in the United States of America. Um, I was born in Chile. I studied a career that is not known here. It is business engineer. Okay, okay. there are two oh. things you can do. It. Your question is, uh, my bachelor's degree or master's degree is a business engineer and accounting office wants to hire me. So it depends. If you want to do an H-1B visa, it's an industry, so you need to wait till February. So you need to keep parallel track in status, in status to an H-1B. So somehow underline uh, in yellow all the credits um, in the business engineering course and say in the accounting office, whatever they want to hire me requires this and do an H-1B. But if it's a perm, then you can, uh, a good lawyer would know how to overcome it. You don't need career, you just need the degree. On a perm, they may say bachelor plus two years. Then you need the two years in whatever the employer wants you to do. So it does. Then you need a past work experience letter. There are five elements: your name, your your date of birth, your place of birth, your job, and the job description, uh, duties, and salary from the old employer. If the old employer closed shop, get your prior customers of the boss to do it or have your boss sign it in personal letterhead that your salary at that time, your name so-and-so, it's a very good case. Business engineer at least is very close to business, which is accounting, um, is a good case. Don't give this case up. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And oh, well, our time is up for today. We only have like 30 minutes until the time is up. Uh, but Ms. Wong, at this time, at this point, uh, we are getting right now into the point of what the banks were analyzing last year that was going to be the um, recession, the econ uh, economical or economic recession of 2023 that is going to last, uh, according to them, uh, three to six months. So what are your recommendations in general to people? Because you have seen many recessions, especially the one in 2007 or 2010. And uh, 
other recessions before. What's, uh, is there hope right now? How can we find hope or a way to uh, succeed in these hard times that we're getting into right now? I think there's a lot, a lot of hope. Even in court, there are four ways now. To, you have dismissal, you have termination, you have admin close, you have status. So things are looking up. And also the work permit status and admin close, you protect work permits, dismissal and termination, you can't. Um, the circuits are coming up with really some good stuff, even though there's a problem with our past president, but I really think America is looking up. At least, you know, it's still the land of the law. If you look at the world, I mean, of course, the, we, America have our own problems. But if you look at the world, America is still the best. You know, so keep at it. I like the last few questions. These are all status issues instead of just filing for work permit or no more papers, because most kids are already over 21. So the ones that could get green card are really because we are into the next generation now. I still remember in the 70s and 80s, most people just came to America and then Reagan gave the uh, gave the. Uh, uh, the amnestia, and then the, the new law came in, IRA, IRA came in. So things are progressing. It's just, I wish Congress and Senate will work together to give us a comprehensive reform. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. And uh, well, um, I'll see you next Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. on the Spanish show, and then on Thursday in the English show on this Facebook and YouTube. Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Have a nice day. Have a good lunch and uh, good luck. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. And for everybody who has joined us today, don't forget the phone number is 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. And the attorney, Margaret W. Wong, is only one call distance from you. You just need to call from any city in the United States, and she will be happy to take care of your immigration case. 216-279-3984, 216-279-3984. Thank you.